I saw a story um, about Grace uh, Shara. It is a, um, a story about a family and a daughter, a teenage daughter, 19 years old, in Wisconsin. I want her dad to tell you her story. Scott, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Glenn. Uh, first of all, tell me about your daughter. Well, that's the that's the most fun part for me. She was she was a special gift from God. She was 19 when he took her home. She had Down syndrome. She was extremely high functioning. You know, God made her that way for one. We we never vaccinated her for two. And my wife is extremely gifted in homeschooling, and and mm. she homeschooled Grace and. So Grace did everything. I mean, she hunted with me. She drove a car. She played violin, um, rode a horse. Uh, just, I mean, there was nothing she didn't do. The sky was truly the limit with Grace, and and uh, you know, we we miss her. We miss her terribly. She was she was our life. Scott, when did she get sick? Well, we we tested her with a home COVID test on October 1st of 2021. And we just thought she had a cold and that test tested positive. The purpose of us testing her at that point was because we were going to go to a wedding. And if she had COVID, we didn't want to spread it at the wedding. But you know what, what happened next was we were uh, following the FLCCC protocol. So she was on ivermectin and vitamins and, we really didn't think anything of it, but we were also monitoring her oxygen saturation level with a pulse ox, and the oxygen saturation went down to 88% on October 6th, mm. and the protocol uh, suggested taking her to the emergency room and admitting her to the hospital if oxygen dropped below 94%, so we did that. Sure. And so that's ultimately what what the sequence of events after that led to Grace's death. But if we would have never taken her to the hospital, um, Grace would be alive today. So when you got to the hospital, what drugs did they give her? They did a low dose steroid for for one that was part of the the COVID protocol at the time, and then oxygen. But then what happened is the drugs that killed her, they put her on a sedation med called Presidex. And that sedation med has a package insert that says to not use for more than 24 hours, because if you do, it causes acute respiratory failure. Well, when Grace's last day on earth started on October 13th of 2021, she was already on the sedation med unknown to us for four full days. And if you looked at Grace's death certificate, you'll see that's the first cause of death, acute respiratory failure with hypoxemia, which is a direct cause for using the sedation drug for more than 24 hours. Why would they, they, why would they use, if you go in for COVID, why would they use a, uh, a drug like Presidex that, that gives you, uh, problems with, with breathing and hypoxia? That's a fantastic question. You know, I can't know their answer to it, but through my research, I have found that there's three reasons that they do it. Number one is their their goal is to get the family or the patient to approve a ventilator because that's where the big financial gain with COVID was. So uh, you have to have a patient sedated in order to put them on a ventilator. So once the patient or their family approves it, they want to do that right away. Uh, so that's the first reason. The second reason is the classification of the room changes. So in Grace's case, she never changed rooms, nor did the care change, but the amount of money the hospital received changed because the room was classified then as ICU. And then mm-hmm. third, which maybe is the most significant reason is if you, you know, When I was taken out by an armed guard on October 10th, if I would have just said, I've had enough, I'm taking Grace with me, they would have raised the, the, it's called AMA, Against Medical Advice Objection, and to try to put up a screen to to refuse me taking Grace with me. 
So those are the three reasons that I know, but I mean, I can't know their reason. I mean, the, the records, um, yeah, it, it's when you review the records, Glenn, it, it shows a picture where they, they justify every single thing they do. Uh, you know, you asked me what other drugs, I mean, they, so they combined Presidex with lorazepam and morphine. Oh my gosh. That's what really? Yeah. That's what really makes this egregious. So Presidex wasn't enough. They took lorazepam and morphine, which those three meds are contraindicated. And they injected those in Grace's body in a window of 29 minutes. And that truly is the second cause of Grace's death, even though they listed on the death certificate COVID-19 pneumonia. What was happening that they had to put those all in her body at the same time in the 30-minute period? Well, that's another fantastic question. You know, the morning started with the doctor calling my wife, Cindy, and I at home saying, Grace had such a good day yesterday. Let's work on nutrition and let's get her out of bed um, so that she can get out of here in the next several days. Let's uh, have her watching TV. You know, everything was was fine. But, you know, interestingly, is while we were on the call with him, they literally took the Presidex up to the maximum allowable dose. And simultaneous with hanging up the phone, he put an illegal do not resuscitate order on Grace. So, you know, I draw my own conclusions from that if you want to hear them, but, you know, it doesn't make any sense at all. My daughter Jessica was with Grace at the time. She said how great of a day Grace had the day before, and Grace's oxygen was at 98 and 99% the entire night in spite of being sedated the night before she died. So none of this makes any sense whatsoever. How could he have put a DNR on your daughter? Only you can do that. Well, that's, of course, one of the reasons we're filing a lawsuit. You're 100% right, but, you know, you cannot, um, I mean, you know, these, these liberals operate outside of, the, outside of the law, and then you're left to sue them to get justice, and it, it's ridiculous. Why, why can't they play by the same rules that you and I are subject to? Have you had any nurses or anybody come out quietly to support you? Uh, interestingly, um, yes, but also no at the same time. I'll give you an example. About two months ago, a nurse who lives next door to a reporter who reported this story early on uh, said she had originally told the reporter this man's lying and lying about the DNR order. Well, then her own dad got a DNR order put on him. And she's not only was the nurse in the hospital, but she's the power of attorney. So then she called the reporter back and said, he's not lying. This is what happened with my, with my dad. I talked personally with that nurse and asked her if she would come on and talk about this with me because people are dying. And she said, I'm 66 years old. I'm a year away from retirement. I don't oh want to jeopardize that. I mean, so this is what's happening. People are, they don't want to speak out. I, uh, I have a daughter of special needs. And um, she has changed my life. She is the best of our family. Um, people that are born um, differently abled is, is God's miracle. Um, and she, I've learned so much from her. And my, my eldest daughter, my second eldest daughter, when we took the kids to uh, Auschwitz to walk through, she couldn't stand, uh, stand it past the room where they had taken all the artificial legs and everything else. But my daughter with cerebral palsy stood there, and she looked at me and she said, Dad, they would have killed me. And I said, yes, honey, they would have. We are experiencing now euthanasia in Canada, like you've never seen, they are starting to allow children to ask for medicine to die and without uh, any kind of permission from the parents. I don't know this doctor. I don't know anything about it. But I will tell you something isn't right here. 
And if we don't all stand up for life, and especially those lives that too many arrogant, haughty, uh, know-it-all doctors and nurses who just look at quality of life and think, I wouldn't want to live that way. They have no quality of life. They have no idea. And those people cannot be the ones in our hospitals. And we are starting to churn them out at our universities. We are starting to um, just become a culture of death. And I don't know, honestly, Scott, I don't know how your story uh, has taken so long to get to my attention uh, or anybody else's attention. How can we help your family? There's a number of ways, and I, I just want to comment because you said a mouthful there, and people do not realize it. You know, you made the reference to World War II. It wasn't until after World War II that the medical staff, the health workers that were tasked with carrying out that agenda were tried. And, you know, we're in the middle of World War III right now, and the healthcare workers are doing the same. And, you know, that's why we're filing this lawsuit is to be one of the people who are standing up to stop this. This behavior is has got to be stopped. And you, you're 100% right with the medical schools are churning out the staff to believe in this. And we, we found a document from the Palliative Care Association of Wisconsin that is training medical people. And it says that whenever possible, decision makers for people with Down syndrome should be encouraged to use substituted judgment to make key palliative care decisions. So they, want, you know, they set this up by saying there's a lifelong toll on families by having a Down syndrome child. There is a lifelong blessing Absolutely. to families. It's it's insane. This is what is being the the propaganda and the programming of medical staff is a significant piece that is literally happening live and nobody knows about it. That's why we're out speaking about this every chance that we can. So you asked how can people help? Um, we set up uh, a give send go. Uh, we we have a web couple of different websites, but the website that people can follow to track Grace's story is uh, www.gracesherra.com, and you can put in your name and email address, and we're sending out regular updates to track the story. And then the website that has my research on it. Uh, and also, you know, just hundreds of pictures and videos of Grace is OurAmazingGrace.net. So I'd encourage people to to visit that website and share the story. That's how you can help because we're doing this to save lives. And the more people who become awake to what is really happening, the more lives that will be saved. We don't want Grace's death to be in vain. God is is clearly using Grace after her death, and you know, we're humbled to be part of that. Scott, I have uh, so much respect for you and your wife. And um, uh, please count me in as someone who will help you in any way uh, that uh, I can. Uh, your um, mission, and really Grace's mission, uh, is very godly. And... Uh, I think it is the number one thing that we as a nation need to face, and that is uh, the defense of life, because it is becoming all too cheap, and too many experts are being churned out that uh, remind me of old times that I thought we were never going to forget, but apparently we have. Scott, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Glenn. You bet. Um, Grace Shara is the uh, website. That's Grace, S-C-H-A-R-A, graceshara.com. If you can, uh, go there, get the address for the Give, Send, Go. Anything that you can uh, donate will be helpful. These guys 
have a big fight ahead of them in Appleton, Wisconsin. 